Governor of the United States of America. Today I give honor to my Creator, God Almighty, and thank Him for the strength, the help, and the guidance that He's given me that brought me before you. Soon after the 2006 campaign, a gentleman wagging his finger at me shouting, Ken Mack, the only way you will ever get in government house is by invitation. <laughs> well today, with great pride and humility, I want to thank you, the people of the Virgin Islands, for your huge invitation. Thank you. I want to thank so many of you over the years, from my first run in public office in 1982 to 2014, that have stayed the course with me, that have worked hard with me, that have struggled with me, that have taken tremendous blows for me. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I will work hard for all of you, the people of the Virgin Islands. As Lieutenant Governor Parter and I take our oaths of office on the grounds of Emancipation Garden, I am reminded of the sacrifices that are forever memorialized in this historic location. The lives of our ancestors who toiled on the land upon which we now live, work, and play are consecrated here. This monument to their memory serves as a testament to the unquenchable thirst for human freedom and dignity, as well as our ability and resilience as a people to overcome even the most challenging obstacles. Those who live before us, and those who taught us to live with integrity and courage, teaching us to have respect for others and to accept personal responsibility, have created a proud people who understand that anything worth having is worth working for. Today we are carrying on the traditions that have been established over the years. Today we move peaceably from one administration to the next, from the seventh elected governor to the eighth. We do inaugurals because this ceremony celebrates the will of a free people to exercise their vote, to choose through a democratic process who governs. Inauguration means beginning, and today, this new administration is committed to begin a new era on the foundation of building. Building for the people of the Virgin Islands, inspiring hope, and constructing a better quality of life. Building to create opportunities for our youth, to provide and care for our senior citizens, and to protect and nurture the well-being of our children. And while we work hard on doing these things, we will walk in the path that we have been taught to be respectful, to be compassionate, to be disciplined, to be appreciative, and yes, to be thankful. During our campaign, Lieutenant Governor Potter and I saw firsthand and learned just how difficult life in our Virgin Islands has become. We met single mothers who are struggling to stay employed and feed and clothe their families. We spoke and listened to the business owners for fighting to keep the lights on and their doors open. We have been in the homes of working couples who have electric bills that have grown larger than one of their paychecks. And because we have all but shut the doors of our senior citizen centers, we have visited with our senior citizens in the cafeteria of our hospitals, in the food courts of our shopping centers and malls, and under the trees on our streets. We mention these difficulties not 
to pass blame, but to underscore just how difficult the lives of many Virgin Islanders have become. Because as a community, as a people, and as a government, we have lost our way. For decades, we have been counting the money we have and the money we don't have by the hundreds of millions of dollars. So we no longer see that a gallon of milk priced at $14 a gallon hurt families. We no longer see that 51 cents per kilowatt hour, five times the national average for electricity, kills businesses, put our people out of work, and force some families to live by candlelight. We have become numb to the violence that pervades our neighborhoods, and we no longer empathize with many folks who simply can no longer make ends meet. Every day, retirees and families decide to move away because they cannot afford the high cost of living in the Virgin Islands. Every year, when our youth graduate from high school, many of them are left with no option but to leave the territory and not return home because we provide them with little or no opportunities to remain here. My fellow Virgin Islanders, the consequences of our not so good choices, the unwillingness of many of us to work hard, and the results of many of the poor public policies that we have adopted have come full circle and now demanding their reward. And so today, this inauguration, this new beginning, offers us again new choices. Do we remain on a self-destructive path and continue the behavior that has brought us some despair and hopelessness? Or do we turn and see the opportunities in the challenges facing us? Are we ready to work hard? be disciplined, be compassionate to others, and be honest with ourselves and accept our responsibilities so we can build a better quality of life for all. What would you choose? What do you choose? Lieutenant Governor Potter and I have chosen. We agreed more than a year ago that we want to lead a government marked by striving for excellence, not perfection. We committed to each other that we would work hard for the people of this territory to be the number one public servants and not lords and masters. We agreed that we would and commit to be responsible, honest, and transparent. So today, we seek to inspire each of you that the Virgin Islands has an opportunity for a new beginning. While we are at a point where we can choose to wave our white flag and surrender, we are also at a point where we can face the many challenges ahead and decide that together we will rebuild our beloved Virgin Islands better and stronger. Asbad and I are inviting everyone to join us in an effort that requires all hands on deck to rebuild our territory. In order to build a better Virgin Islands, everyone is needed. The private sector, the not-for-profit community, the public sector, and everyone in between. In short, our commitment is simple. We will not betray or trample upon the expectations and hopes of you, the people of the Virgin Islands. We see the hope in the eyes of the people of the Virgin Islands, and together we will all work to make the hopes and dreams of those who call these great Virgin Islands home a reality. I caution you that this will not happen overnight, but staying focused on a common purpose I assure you, it will happen. Difficult days do lie ahead, but these difficult days are rife with opportunities for a better quality of life. 
These opportunities will only become a reality if we seize upon them with hope, faith, vision, hard work, and a common purpose to build a better, stronger, and brighter Virgin Islands for everyone. The Gospel according to John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus teaches us that in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. As Virgin Islanders at this new beginning, we must do just that. Be of good cheer. With our faith, with our hope, our determination to strive for excellence, and our commitment to work hard, we will overcome our tribulations. We will build on the good choices and the good actions we have taken as a people. We must look towards the future and only learn from the past. So we're off to building our vision and our promise to you. We're off to a place to invest in our people, to hire, to create opportunities by growing our economy and providing our youth with the skills and trades to do the jobs and to own and operate the businesses. My friends, I want you to know that long ago, I set a standard of excellence for myself. And today, this is the standard I am setting for my administration. <laughs> to, achieve, to achieve this objective, objective, I will lead first by example. Like many Virgin Islanders, I come from a very large family on both sides. Families whose roots are deeply planted in the Caribbean. Families who knew the importance of all the elders being involved in a child's life. For me, that included my grandmother, my mother, my aunts, my uncles, cousins, and teachers who played a role in shaping the person I have become. They instilled in me a love and respect for others and a love for the U.S. Virgin Islands. They taught me the value of hard work and charity, hence my passion for public service. I am the proud product of the public school system, so I know firsthand the dedication and sacrifices our teachers and principals make who do so much while earning so little. My career path, some might say, was an improbable rise to the podium upon which I stand today. I began my public service as a police officer, which gives me a unique insight into our communities. The more than three decades that I have worked in the public sector have taught me the value of teamwork, coming together as one, and the importance of being able to reach across the aisle to get the job done. So I pledge to work with members of our Senate, our new delegate to Congress, our leaders in the business community, and those who sacrifice and work hard in the not-for-profit community. To our former governors, I ask you to be a part of this new beginning. To the members of the legislature, we need you as a part of our foundation. And to the members of the, the judiciary, who work diligently every day to enforce the rule of law, we also need you as a part of our foundation. The wheels of good government work when we all work together. To our people, we need you. We need your voice. We need your support. We are committed to doing all we can on your behalf, but you too must be a part of this rebuilding. Neither I nor anyone on my team will ever ask more of you than we are willing to give. My administration cannot do this alone. We must stand together or neither of us will stand at all. Thank you for your continued support. Lieutenant Governor Parker and I ask you to keep us in your prayers. We ask God to bless the Virgin Islands and bless the United States of America. Thank you.